I've got three hours to make a slider, a giant slider of three meters and a half. I'm from the store with some um, material, a tubing of six by six centimeters to send it just after having lunch. Yeah, I will do it. Some months ago, I was in charge of two things in a commercial, that was the camera movement and the stop motion animation. The main camera movement was a traveling of near 4 meters, so you can imagine that the set was huge. So I ordered all the parts to build this massive setup here in the workshop, but something happened with the transport, I don't know the issue, but the package didn't arrive on time here. And I needed these parts to readapt them and test the whole slider and then reship everything to the final destination that was Madrid. The only option I had was to improvise and try to find all the materials here or in a local store so I could mount everything and try to ship. Normally the kind of sliders that I use are those that have this shape this is the first slider I built and we used here in the studio it was made in 2011 for click and it's just a, a square or rectangular tubing of aluminium and some pieces that I imagined to, to make it as light as tight as possible. It was 100% manual, which means that you have to calculate all the movements and when it's like a constant move, it's easy, but if you are accelerating or decelerating, it starts to be pretty complicated. Hey, so we are back to present again, and yeah, I achieved the goal to build the main thing, the rail, with a nice and a smooth connection between the two parts, and also a place to hold the motor and the belts. Later, with more time, I made the carriage. As the part is smaller, I could bring it with me by train. The whole system works because of the friction and the weight. 
They are two shapes that fits one into each other and slides. Then a good motor and 8 meters of belt. The simple the better. I can't